There's a quote floating around on Twitter and in the media, which I'll be fact-checking in this video, which was released by the Burnett Institute, noting that according to Google, the Burnett Institute is located on the traditional land of the Boon Wurrung people, and we offer our respects to their elders past and present, which is repeated in every one of their categories. Okay, delving deeper, they state, Burnett Institute is an Australian, unaligned, not-for-profit, independent organisation that combines medical research with practical action to address health issues globally. Okay, got it. Back to their Twitter quote, I have absolutely no doubt that Australians don't know that COVID is putting 50 times more people in hospital than the flu. It's killing 50 to 100 times more people than the flu. That 5% if they get infected, even if they're vaccinated, are likely to get long COVID. The part that I'll be fact-checking today is the one in green, that COVID is killing 50 to 100 times more people. This quote is by Professor Brendan Crabb, taking a look at his Twitter profile. Yes, he's one of those people who still wear a mask in their Twitter profile. He's the director and CEO of the Burnett Institute, Parasites, Viruses, Global Health, Medical Research and Health Equity. Okay, so the first thing I did was look up the most recent COVID data on the Australian Bureau of Statistics website. This data was released on the 24th of January 2023 and is a summary report of provisional mortality statistics for January through to October of 2022. Noting that this report doesn't show very much information, it's got the age brackets and sex for all-cause mortality, as well as the deaths by state. It doesn't go into any other details like cause of death or anything like that. However, they do show all COVID-attributed deaths that have occurred in Australia every month throughout the pandemic. For example, there was a total of 9,440 deaths that were officially attributed to COVID in 2022, noting that the majority of these deaths occurred in the earlier months of the year, with often more than 1,000 deaths per month, whereas recent months show significantly less deaths, well under 500 per month. I'm going to go out on a limb here and predict that 2022 will be the worst year for COVID in terms of deaths. I'd suggest that based on recent months, this will get better as time goes on. After downloading the data and graphing it, this is a graph of all COVID deaths throughout the entire pandemic. If you insert a trend line, you might mistakenly think that COVID is getting worse, but that's only because there were so few deaths early on. But if we look just at 2022 data, it tells a completely different story. Deaths are definitely trending downwards as more and more people build up immunity to the disease. Hence why I state that 2022 will probably be the worst COVID year we'll ever experience it certainly looks that way anyway. Assuming that 2022 is one of the worst years for COVID, well, it would make sense to compare it with one of the worst years for flu if you want to compare apples with apples. Don't worry, I'll compare it with a lower year later. A quick Google search tells us that 2017 was one of the worst years for flu. This archived report from the ABS titled Causes of Death Australia 2017, specifically deaths due to influenza. In 2017, there were 1,255 deaths due to influenza, which is a significant increase from 2016 where 464 influenza deaths were recorded. First, let's compare the 2017 figure of 1,255 with our 2022 COVID figure of 9,440. So 9,440 divided by 1,255 equals 7.52. That means there were 7.5 times as many COVID deaths in 2022 as there were flu deaths in 2017. I'm not saying that's not significant. Significant, that's certainly a lot. However, it's nowhere near the 50 to 100 times more that the good professor was proclaiming. To give him the benefit of the doubt, let's assume that he compared 2022 with a lesser year, say 2016, noting that he didn't tell us how he calculated his numbers. Please correct me if he did. 2016 had significantly less flu deaths at 464. Running the numbers, we find that there were 20 times as many COVID deaths in 2022 as there were flu deaths in 2016. Yes, it's significant, but it's still not anything like the 50 to 100 times the good professor was quoting. So how did he get his figures? 
Well, I think he used the latest provisional mortality statistics from the ABS, noting that this has a reference period of January to September 2022. If you scroll down to the doctor certified deaths by cause table, you'll see that in September 2022, there were 234 deaths from influenza and pneumonia, of which 230 were from pneumonia. That leaves us with four flu deaths in September. If we compare that with the 420 COVID deaths that occurred in the same time period, we get 420 divided by 4, which means we could say that there were 105 times as many COVID deaths, which is something akin to the good professor's tweet. But I would suggest that comparing a single month of data would not be a very accurate way to come up with these statistics. If we look at the same set of data, but instead look at the baseline average, 404 minus 242 equals 162 flu deaths on average, noting that we don't have a baseline average for COVID as it hasn't been around long enough. But comparing our average flu deaths with our total 420 COVID deaths for September, we find that there were approximately 2.6 times as many COVID deaths as compared to historical influenza averages, which is a lot, lot less than the quoted 50 to 100 times that Professor Crab has been telling everybody. Yes, those are crabs on his mask. So in terms of my fact check, is it true that 50 to 100 times more people are dying from COVID than from the flu? Well, in the spirit of our public broadcaster, the ABC, Professor Crab's figures are severely overstated. Mm -hmm. 